Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the seventh episode of the Stevenage Football Club podcast, hosted by myself, Matt Farley, along with guests of the podcast, discussing everything Borough, everything League Two, every week of the season. Now, it has been quite a busy week of football. We've had our second League Two fixture of the season, along with our Carabao Cup tie last night. We have got a lot on the show tonight. We have brought back the Harley and Farleys disagreement corner so it should be quite fun we've got a lot to get through we've got to get through our league two roundup and our q a section at the end of the podcast now introductions i have got three people with me today two originals we'll come back to well welcoming back a man that was away last week i'm afraid so we were a bit disappointed a uh, big welcome back to harley clark harley welcome back thanks for having me pleasure to be back sorry i came back last week yeah no, we were a bit glad you weren't here last yeah, week you know, i'll be honest um, things came up. Oh, these things happen in life. A uh, man who is also an original helped me out last week as well. A uh, big welcome back to Danny Lusby. Welcome back, Danny. Hello, Matt. Delighted to be here once again. No problem, mate. It's good to have you back. And it was quite hot in that car last week, wasn't oh, it? Oh, it was like, God, we've been it trying felt to get like through it. Last week, didn't it you? did, yeah. Well, after the technical difficulties, we put cooler, it down to. It's a lot cooler in your house. So. <laughs> Very true. Now, we do have a brand new guest on the podcast today. Now, uh, a very nice young man. I've had the pleasure of having a night out with this young man Thank in Manchester. You very much, Absolute top man. Uh, a big welcome to Joe, a massive Borough fan. Joe, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me, mate. This is awesome. This has been in the works since Salford, I think. It has, like, hasn't it? Since, we, like, it since has. the night out we had in Salford, you've been promising <laughs> to get on episode. I think we were four pints down when we decided will, to. We'll leave that part out of the podcast. <laughs> so. But Joe, as we always ask to the new guests, uh, thoughts on the podcast and how it's going? Yeah, it's fantastic. I think I reached out to you to say it's been. Uh, it's been fueling my commute in the morning so far. It's been my main thing, my main source of learning. It's really good. No, it's, it's bringing people together. I think it's awesome. Man. Yeah, no, we're, we're giving it a good gun again. We want this to be the next big podcast at the club. So, uh, yeah, it's doing all right at the minute. Seventh episode and no one's been complaining. So we've just got to keep going, really. Um, so, boys, we'll get straight into it. Uh, since Salford, obviously, we did our podcast last week on the build-up mm-hmm. to Exeter. Um, uh, me, I was, I was a little bit positive going into Exeter because I like to look at Salford as a one-off. Uh, a game where nothing went right, but unfortunately we we lost again on Saturday, one uh, 0 to Exeter. They scored in the eighty eighth minute to win the game, which was a bit disappointing. Twenty third place with zero points. Harley, I'll come to you first, mate. Um, disappointing Saturday to lose again. Uh, it's disappointing to lose, but I think I said a lot. Uh, I think I messaged you last week saying that, um, mm. I think it'll either go one 0 either way. Mm. So I think it will be. And it's again. I think it was just a case of last week was whoever scored one. Yeah. I don't think mm. team, either team played particularly great. Mm. We weren't amazing, but we made them look like they were the best team we were in the last ten minutes of the game. Mm. But it's what it is. I've always, I've said August is going to be our hardest month of the season. So I'd rather get no points here and then carry on. It, it does look like that just here yeah. in a minute. Um, Danny, come to you second, 88th minute winner. I mean, we would have taken a point, wouldn't we? For that to yeah. go in was very disappointing, wasn't it? Yeah, especially, you know, it's such a late time in the game. Um, you know, what a goal to win it, though, for Exa. Yeah, good um, strike. Mm. Yeah, good. it's a shame. No, I would have taken a point. Mm. Um, we didn't play great, um, as Harley rightly said. Exeter didn't either. Um, I thought a point would have been a fair result. Mm. Um, but obviously, Exeter had their chance at the end and they took it very, very well. So, mm. nothing you can do. But, you know, we just have to move on. I thought it was a better performance than Salford. Yeah, not I agree. By, I thought it was better. Lot, but, you know, we didn't concede two. <laughs> you know, that's oh, yeah. progress. I mean, <laughs> I'll come to you now, Joe. I mean, I think a disappointing stat for me, again, is... From those first two opening matches, I think we recorded only, was it two shots on target? Yeah. Which isn't, isn't great, is it? I really? think everyone can see that's certainly a part of our team that is, for whatever reason, I'm sure we'll come on to it, mm. that's lacking, for want of a better word, I think. At the yeah, moment. yeah, I completely we are, agree. We look, at times, really solid at the back. I, yeah. think you'd, I think you'd all agree. I mean, you said it, yeah. you alluded to it earlier, Salford, perhaps, as a mm. one-off. I think we can all write that off in terms of a performance. Mm. There were yeah. still positives to take from it. Mm. But I think, yeah, the creativity and the fact we have only had what was it, one or two shots on target for those games? Yeah, we'll come, two, yeah. We'll come on to talk about last night against South End. It, mm. it just doesn't feel like the sort of performance that we want to see, I think, from players in Steven and Shirt. Not in terms of the way they're playing, yeah. but just the final product, I think, at times has been, uh, mm. been very lacking, unfortunately. No, do you know, I completely agree. Um, do you know what? I thought it was a. 
I thought it was a better performance than Salford. I thought yeah, actually, majorly, if you if you look definitely. at especially the first, I thought we matched Exeter. Yeah. Um, I just thought that there, there's a lack of creativity up top at the minute. I don't know whether that's down to a lot of the new players playing and the injuries, but yeah, we just we just didn't create a lot, did we? Other than one shot, it was. I'd actually go too far. I'd say we not only matched Exeter. I'd say we topped. Top text to it. Quite mm. a few I've heard a few people that say game. that. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah. that's not unfair to say that there were times we topped them. But as you say, it just felt, you know, again, whatever reason, the creativity just wasn't quite there. There were moments mm. when, you know, with Guthrie up front and Taylor and mm. Cowley when he came on, where they didn't seem quite in sync to me, and they seemed like something wasn't quite right. Yeah, so, do you know? I completely okay. agree. Um, also, as well, I, I cannot remember a season where we've lost our first two opening games of the season. Is that? No, is that I, ever I, I don't think football? I've ever been to a stevenage over in a few weeks where we've lost two in a row. I don't think that's the... the I think we've I lost, can't remember drawn one. Yeah. one. No. Ten years. Yeah. It, I've, I've been going nearly 15 years. Yeah. And never won. Never won. It's very disappointing because I, I would have taken a point that match and I've seen it so many times at Borough. We, we get to the last couple of minutes of the game and then yeah. someone goes and scores yeah. a goal. It felt very so similar to last year. It, it did. I remember. Do you know what game I, I actually compared it to? I compared it to the Berry home match. Do you remember this in March? Was that yeah. one uh, last minute Gibson. goal? Yeah, that, the one the yeah we played really well, and we, yeah. we hadn't had a great uh, run of form recently, and we played really, and we deserved <coughs> the point, yeah. and then they scored in the last minute, and it reminded yeah. me of that game, and I just thought, oh, we deserve, we, oh, I don't think we deserve to win because it was quite evident we didn't create a lot in front of goal, but I don't, I don't think we deserve to lose that. I thought well, it, it was just unfortunate. Yeah, you know, we've been a better team in those sort of games, and yeah. we somehow lose. At the end of it, and lose at the end of it. I completely agree. It's just, you know, us being unfortunate. That's all it is. As it is, as it is all the time. Um, yeah. We are going to take a quick listen to Dino's interview after the match. Now, hopefully, this works. <laughs> it, it didn't last <laughs> time. I have, I, faith. This. I have faith. I have faith. We're going to play his interview. We're going to quickly listen to his interview. We're going to discuss it, and uh, yeah, we will move into our three-word analysis. So hopefully, this works. Yeah, because it was clear it was five. First half, very, very good half. We should have scored two or three. We didn't. It happens sometimes. Um, second half, say the front four, we played most of it in their half until probably last 10, 15 minutes when one or two of our boys struggled physically. Um, they probably sensed that moment. And they got the goal. But I've got to speak about the goal because it was a huge moment in the game. Um, I mean, uh, I hope the, the Football League will show the incident tonight. Uh, because uh, their forward there uh, actually smacked Stokesy right on the face, across the face, in clear view of the referee. Uh, in the 85th minute, just before this goal, uh, the corner, we end up defending with 10, because Stokesy was having dreamed outside, and they score from it. Uh, big, big moment, big moment in the game, and, um, and the referee should have done his job there, because it was clear, it was five yards away from me, clear view like I just showed you in the video. Uh, it's unforgivable, really. Um, we end up defending the corner. Players picking up, should be picking up. Stokes was a, bit, a, bit, a big loss in the box there. Um, we didn't get the second in the score What we need is find, find the rhythm. Find the rhythm. Paul Taylor is the first time he played with uh, Darren Newton. First time he played with Curtis. Uh, he got to be understanding last season when he got in his chair. It took him a, a few weeks to get going. And when things click together, and when we find the right, uh, we get everybody back to feet on the pitch. Play the system that suits us. I'm sure we'll get going, and I'm sure the fans will, uh, will see a lot of good football coming through. Okay, okay. So we've listened to Dino's post-match interview. Now, there's one thing in there that we haven't spoke about yet. Was the last minute? Uh, well, obviously the goal, but what went along with that goal? Yeah. Uh, with well, a foul in the box. I thought. Foul's a nice word for what happened in the box. Yeah, I think foul is a nice way of putting it when Stokes... Well, I saw it. I I was actually looking in the box and, yeah, he, he got kind of smacked in the face with, with Parks' arm. I mean, what do we Howie think about that? Off, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's... I, I think the most telling thing from that was that he's been suspended for three games and yeah. Exeter have accepted it and they haven't appealed it, which isn't something you always see, actually, with decisions like that. So I'm assuming mm. the footage is pretty... Uh, pretty puts a pretty bang to rights it does doesn't incident. it uh, what I found really disappointing is okay if the referee doesn't see it fine but the linesman yeah. he's looking in the box isn't he he's looking it's, straight it's in you, right, should, you should, have, you should yeah. have two linesmen looking in the box there. Yeah. I know yeah. we're very critical of referee's ability at league 2 level because we all know it's not the greatest it's not 
you're not getting like yeah. your Mike Deans and your uh, mm. Graham, Graham Poles and all that, you know. But I could see it from the crowd. Yeah, the, it was very really evident. Yeah, we're it? all in the East Terrace. It's, it's, it's them yeah. sort of decisions which make or break games. That's why the referees in the higher divisions are paid that sort of money yeah. mm. and, they're, and they're doing the big, big games because they spot that sort of thing. Mm. He was looking directly at it and he's just going bang, straight in the face. Yeah, and like he's, like, he's like Joe said, the fact that Exeter aren't appealing it just shows how, how bad the... Uh, how bad it is. No, I, com- is. I completely agree. Um, it's just so annoying. Look, I'm not going to use that as an excuse to us letting in that last minute no. goal, but... It's just it, I've seen it so many times at Bar where we, where we do well. It seems like we do get stitched over by the referees I'm, and officials at I'm times, not don't we? It's all by it. You know, when yeah. was the last time we had a good referee? Yeah, Let's very be true. Um, but again, it, it was a it, disappointing day. There's been a lot of worry since then. I really quickly want to clear something up, really, really quickly about the Dino comments <laughs> that that we've all seen. Um, I've heard a lot of Dino out comments since since yeah. that loss against Exeter before the cup game last night. I mean. Is that a bit silly, do you think, all these... Oh, very. It's ridiculous. 100%. Yeah. Give, give the guy a chance. Um, he hasn't been at the club long, has he? You know, I, I one agree. Year, one yeah. year at the club, or two years, is it? I think his second tenure properly. Yeah. Mm. Just, like, give him this season. You know, he almost got us to playoffs last season. He's made some good signings. Yeah. They need time to gel. It's only been three games. And he just needs time. I think you've yeah. still got, you've got to give it about ten or twelve games before you can start really making mm. a proper judgment on how mm. how they're going to do because I I'm very much like my dad in in terms of I'll give my full back into the manager as long as I can but yeah. when when I, when I hit that that not necessarily that wall but when I hit the point where it's like you can just tell that it's not going anywhere then I'll be like, yeah then, I, then you've got got real I think what worried that. me is is um, it was even before the Exeter game. I saw a lot of people say, oh, Dino's not good enough. And it's, and it's a bit like, well, well, OK, look, we've played one game. First of all, I, I don't really look at August football as a really important month anyway. I don't really think it has. All right, it can accumulate points, but I don't look at it as a massive month. And what really annoyed well, me no, is... You, you look at, sorry. Uh, you no, look go at, for it, go for it. You look at Luton a couple of years ago in League Two. Mm. Absolutely flying. You know, they beat us 7-1, mm. all, all that. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, very disappointing that to bring up. Um, Never mind. Yeah, but, but it's, the, it's the same principle. They were flying for the, mm. the entire year, mm. top of the league. Then they messed up and they came third. Yeah, Quite, that's it. They still got promotion, but they, Luton, the way they played football, they should have won the league that year. Mm. I think what we've seen is there's always going to be a number of people who don't like a manager at a football club, whatever football club you're at, whoever mm. the manager is. And what the first few losses three losses on the bounce that I've done is essentially given those people a mandate to come out on whatever yeah, platform exactly, exactly that. we know the I main platform so. and say shout Dino out whatever actually if you look at not just the fact we've got three losses because that's the easy thing to mm. do don't just look at the win-loss column look at the manner of those losses mm. it's what we spoke about last night so look at mitigating factors in terms of the injuries we've got the way we played mm. you know if we I mean I can't remember which league was it which team was their manager was let go after two games this year he's been done 5-0 that's an example uh, of when you can yeah, go clearly yeah. something I know it's at lower level so comparison's maybe not as mm. accurate but clearly you can go okay something's wrong with the managerial or the coaching setup there mm. I don't think that's the case at all here and those people who are making that argument they're, they're not substantiated I mean, points, I they're just people who want to want to shout something loud because that's how they feel and they've got a tiny little bit of evidence yeah I, I completely agree I, I've heard a lot of people as well say you know Dino's not good enough and, and, and there's people out there that keep relating to last season look that was if you think that this team's new yeah. that team last yeah. season was brand new and, and yeah. for me well I knew that it. last season was going to be one of those seasons where we'd win a game we'd lose the next two because we it takes time you need two things in this league to do well so either one you need to have a lot of money and, yeah. you, and you spend a lot or it's two you have a team for a couple of seasons that have yeah. played together and, and, and we all knew that last season All right, I know people bring up Ilias Chair and he was a great player I think Ilias would have done that for a lot of other sides not just us yeah um, and you know hearing the Dino out and Dino's not good enough after one match he's, is he's got a very a difficult job it's, it's not easy I've got a lot being of injuries, a football manager you know? is not and yeah especially with injuries as well if you've had the same opinion like that since the start of last season mm. then I do get your point mm. yeah. but I still think you proved people wrong last year mm. first, first season in, first full yeah. season in the EFL and we finished a point outside the playoffs yeah. Don't think no. we were... One point. I mean, it was... Could have done much better with a brand new do, manager. Do you know what really annoys me as well? 
there's a lot of people out there that bring up a lot of poor performances the last season, you know, Cambridge. But I don't hear anyone going, well, hang on a sec, what about the excellent performances? What about the two wins against Colchester and the win at Morgan? Why, why don't we talk about those excellent performances and just, oh, that Cambridge day was awful? Do you know what I mean? There's, there's a, yeah, you look at teams a lot of good performances look, there. Look at the performance yeah. we played at Mansfield last season. Yeah. I remember that was the best away display I've ever seen from yeah. the team. And this is it as well. Um, one thing I just want to clear up just before we move on to the League Cup is... The Ilias chair thing, I've heard this a lot. I've heard this so oh. much on social media. And again, something so I want to nip in the bud. People going, you know, Ilias saved Dino's career. Well, well, hang on a sec. I don't think Ilias turned up at the training ground one he was day. The and one went, that brought him in, Dino. I'm playing for Stevenage now for the next month. Dino invested in him. I think what a lot of people forget is, well, actually, it was actually really good management exactly. for Dino to recruit a player like that. And when other, I heard there was other League One clubs wanted him, and we got him... Yeah. That's excellent management, isn't it? I, really mean, yeah. I think that came fairly directly as well through Dino's relationship with QPR. So and Luke like, Freeman, yeah, there was Luke a link Freeman, there, wasn't there? That's something there. But as you say, I mean, I can't remember who it was. Someone actually worked out the points tally in terms of mm. how many points you would have got if Ilias like- Chair never turned up. And although, of course, it makes a difference. And we all remember Lincoln and, as you say... You know, yeah, they're all those special moments. The games yeah. like that, he did give us that. But to credit, I think, anyone who actually really watches football seriously... To credit one player with a team success mm. is pretty naive, I think, as an opinion. Oh, I completely um, agree. I completely yeah. agree. But um, I do feel like, unless it's a team where they've got, say, your Ronaldo or your Messi in it, who clearly are a level above everyone else. Yeah. But even with a Ronaldo, and, I know you want to move on. Even with a Ronaldo yeah. and a Messi, mm. you look at the other players in those yeah, teams. I'm not, I'm not going to compare our team to Real Madrid. No, but you look, no, I'd like to. as much as <laughs> but you talk about Ramos you, you and at, TVC yeah. in one go. But you, you look at Real Madrid. The moment Ronaldo left, they flopped massively. Yeah. Mm. It happens. Ilias would have done that at any other yeah. side. It just so happens he's, to be us, and then everyone goes. He's starting to do it at QPR now. Yeah, he scored yeah, the other night. He scored last night. night. Yeah. It happens. So I'm um, really quickly just before we move on to the league cup. I'm really quickly, I asked for a free word analysis. We're gonna, I'm not going to read all of them because obviously that we've been going twenty minutes. And we've only spoke on the first match, uh, but I'm going to quickly read some out. Um, Barra really said severe scoring problem. Uh, Borough Bits oh, God, that Borough Bits uh, No final product uh, Hartley Borough said Very disappointing performance Cobby said Why play Arthur Interesting one mm-hmm. uh, Nick Kay said We miss Chair And then he said We miss Kennedy uh, oh. Reese Donnelly said I miss scoring <laughs> After 108 <laughs> minutes of football uh, Colin Pepe at Dino by name He said that last week Colin uh, Nate said Oh, can't really read that out. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Keegan said, same old Stevenage. Oh, sorry, this is Nate. So he said, please drop Arthur. Mm. Patrick Jackson passed the ball. Ian Coles, it was poor. Craig Keegan, strength, aggression, lacking. Uh, Aidan Habibi has left us nearly a, a dissertation. I'm just going <laughs> to read one out. Uh, Dino's boring football. Um, oh, and we have also got Jamie Wren, Wesley over Dean. Well, that's going back into the archives, isn't it? Uh, there's but no, one. there's always one. Uh, thank you for the three word analysis for anyone that sent that in. Uh, now, obviously, moving on from Saturday, last night we had uh, our Carabao Cup first round tie against Southend <coughs> United. Now, I think for a lot of us Borough fans, we looked upon us last night as a, as a good match to have because we wanted to put Saturday and Salford to bed quickly. And yeah. I think we all looked upon the tie last night as it could be a game that we finally see a good performance, we can get our first goal and take a bit of momentum to Orient on Saturday and some of the upcoming matches. Um, we unfortunately lost again 2-1. Um Although we did go 1-0 up and we scored our first goal, a great finish from Dean Parrott, putting us 1-0 up at half-time. And then... Should have seen the scenes in East Terrace. Yeah, well, I heard Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Songs. Hallelujah. You can actually hear the Hallelujah very clearly <laughs> on the goal Now, we will quickly just go through this because we've been going 20 minutes. But um, another last 2-1. OK, it's against the League One team. I know they lost their first two games as well. Uh, what are our thoughts on last night, boys? Good performance, not good performance. It was a bit of a mix th- of both, I isn't it? I think it was a much better performance in the first half. and then Yeah. You can tell that the fitness isn't up to uh, up to scratch at the moment. And yeah. the moment second half started, just dropped it. Yeah, I, th- I think. Uh, I mean, Dino promised us what was it? A f- fast and fiery was at the start. Of the yeah, process, which perhaps didn't, definitely 
didn't materialise from our end. South End yeah. were pretty dominant for the first kind of 10, 15 it was really, It was really weird, actually, because the first minute they nearly scored. Yeah. Yeah. Really, I thought they really really we gave the ball away in the first two seconds. Could really, you imagine yeah. if it would have gone in? I think everyone would have left. It was, it was <laughs> the definition of fast and fiery. Uh, um, and then, as I said, the, the sprinkler put out the fast and fiery. Oh, that was so funny, and, wasn't uh, it? Which was good. But actually, that sprinkler almost seemed to... Uh, I don't know, maybe you had an on-button on on for us to also turn on yeah, the sprinkler. Do you know what I said as well? It was really funny. I, I said to Amy, when we were at the match and, and the sprinkler come on, I said, I bet Dino's out the back. That's what I said. The it was just when they had that free kick and you could see <laughs> Dino splicking yeah. a Here come the tactics. Big, big red button. You yeah. know. I thought um, we got into the game eventually. South mm. dominated the first 10 minutes. Um, I thought we grew into thought, it though. Yeah, we did grow we, into it. Uh, yeah, I thought, I, you um, know. Guffey looked good up front. Mm. You know, he, he was more attacking. Yeah. Dean Parrott as well. Yeah. I thought obviously he scored a great, great goal. Fantastic. But do you know what? Yeah, I, do you know I thought we, again, there was a period in the game where mm. I liked our performance. When yeah. Southend had that first five, ten minutes, we then grew into the game. And then from then to the end of the half, I thought it was pretty much all of us. We had the ball. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Parrott yeah. scored an absolute Taylor cracking goal. Really hard what well. I liked about Parrott's goal is the last goal he scored for us was against Southend as well. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah, it was in the playoffs. So like it was quite... Uh, and it was not similar, but it went in the top corner. It was a similar strike in many ways. But... Um, but yeah, it was a good performance. I really liked it at half time. I, I thought, you know what, they've come out here, they've played well. The team looked nice and relaxed. Again, I thought Guthrie was great. Yeah. Uh, he'd give that centre half nightmares. He yeah. had to go off in the yeah. end. I know he was injured, but. Um, I thought Terence was solid. Yeah, and, and also. was great, I thought. One other player that, that we've missed out that I actually thought played really well in that first half was Charlie Carter. Yeah. yeah. I thought yeah. he looked half decent, Charlie. Indeed. You know, we've also missed out. Who I think was man of the match. Go for it, yeah. yeah. Well, we were we, going to come we, on to that. Yeah, we, we are going to come on to that. But. Um, no, I did. I did like Charlie. I thought he looked really, really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, he did come off of an injury, I believe, though, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah possibly. I think so. Now I think this that's is the, the story only. Of the evening, isn't it? This is the only disappointing thing. We've got a massive match coming up, all in, and we will discuss that later after the disagreement corner. But. Cuthbert off injured, Sanupe off injured, Parrot off injured, Charlie Carter off injured. Taylor I mean, also looked like he did. Taylor was seen had a groin problem. What, what, what are going on with these injuries? I mean, is it just unlucky? Are we getting unlucky or is this actually something to do on the training pitch? We don't We've know. heard a lot yeah. of it. Um, no. I'm hearing Dino's training the players too hard. Well, I wonder I, who's I, been I, out with their binoculars then. Yeah, someone, because, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't believe that. I don't think Dino's a sort of bloke. Yeah. Um, yeah, it could just be a case of us being unlucky. Fair, I mean, he know? said he said um, in his interview, you know, he's been in football twenty five years and he's never I've seen, seen an injury this yeah. like this. I think the ultimate point is that we don't know, as you say, that we're not out there with binoculars every day, even the most keen amongst us. I think perhaps there is possibly a correlation with. I mean, how many physios have we had in? <sighs> yeah. we, what is it, we're looking for our sixth physio now, and I definitely think in terms of if you have one physio consistently. You know they'll maybe have a mm. better idea of a treatment plan for those longer term mm. players. Maybe Good point. you know we've got a lot of our new signings have come in injured. Perhaps they would have been able to yeah. scout that out a little bit. So perhaps yeah. that's a factor. Perhaps as Danny said, they're training them too hard. What maybe there's some sort of curse? Someone's got a voodoo doll in Luton. I don't know. <laughs> the, point is, the point is that no one's got a clue. It, it, it's just, as you say, it's a bit worrying, farming. isn't it? Because if if I mean for me. I think Cuthbert's a massive player yeah. to be missing. He's, he's the biggest one. And we want him in these League 2 matches, especially coming up. They're tough matches. Captain as well, but I think it? someone said earlier, if you include, we've got over 11 players out injured yeah. for, on a 20-man squad, yeah. nearly. I mean, Harvey, what do, what do we think about this? Not, not... Um, it's quite a shocking injury list, isn't it, really? Yeah. And it, it, it'd be all right if it was a few first-team players and a few young, younger players. <laughs> but it's, it's practically the whole yeah. of the first team. And not, I say not just the first thing, but the senior players. Yeah. You know, Dino had to play himself at this rate. Yeah, it would well, surprise me. <laughs> Dino and Ashton coming back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you yeah, imagine possibly. it? Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> could you imagine it? Denton's brought in, and he played, played the pre season, yeah. gets injured. Mm. Digby. I think Digby arrived in as, well. as well. Did, did, did Digby arrive? I right, think right, he that's had that, that problem. That's the impression I get, which is frustrating. But, and then, mm. didn't, didn't Jason Cowley arrive injured as well? I think he. I. Again, you never know. I got the impression that he was perhaps struggled a little bit in terms of fitness and niggles with the moves. Yeah, I think time he's 100% fit, it's, a, it's a big step up. How many of our players were 100% fit last night, actually? To be well, honest, well, this is it because in the interview, I would play it, but again, the yeah. signal's gone on the thing. But um, in the interview, he does say, you know, physically, we're not, we're not there yet. And it, it is interesting if players are playing with knocks. You know, is Dean Parrott playing with a little niggle? Yeah. Because he did go off at Salford. Yeah. Is Cuthbert 
I know that in the pre-season he had a knock. Is he playing with yeah. a knock because we haven't got the players? It might be one of those things. I think looking that good, Scott Cuthbert, to be honest. Yeah, it, it, it is disappointing. Um, and obviously last night we ended the tie with 10 men, didn't yeah. we? Because yeah. we used to our subs. Well, yeah. uh, very disappointing. But um, yeah, another loss. Three losses competitively in a row. Again, I, t- I can't remember supporting the club for 15, 16 years. I can't remember... <laughs> a, uh, a borough team which have lost all three uh, competitive fixtures very disappointing but a bet performance in that first half than we've seen um, now a feature that we have left out for the last few weeks uh, Harley on Farley's disagreement corner now this is a feature that I quickly just want to talk about just quickly before we get on to it um, we haven't done it for the last few weeks because there's been nothing to debate about basically no, yeah. when the pre-season period's going it is very tough to kind of debate now it is going to be a debate that we are going to do regularly probably even two every two weeks we'll do the debate we Good are stuff. going to do the debate now Let's which go. is very exciting now how it's going to work is obviously it's called the Harley and Farley disagreement corner but we are going to do a team up of 2v2 it is going to be Harley and Joe and it's going to be myself and Danny. Now, it's going to be us debating, and this is why we're coming on to the disagreement corner now, the injury list. Now, the big debate at the minute, and I've seen it on social media, is whether our recent injuries are the main cause for our poor start. There's been uh, discussions and, and tweets and Facebook posts about Actually, it's the poor tactics by Dino. and We have actually got a good team even with the injury list, but we're playing the wrong tactics. We've also got, well, no, I think the injury list is actually the main reason. And we're going to debate that right now. Now, Harley and Joe are going to go for no, that they don't think the injury list is the cause of our problems. Me and Danny are going to go, we're going to say yes, we do believe. Now, because Harley... His name is first oh, in, the, in the feature. Oh, it's weird that I let Harley have his moment to shine, first of all. So, Harley and Joe, you're going to make your point. <coughs> Harley, if you'd like to make yours, and then yeah. Joe will make Joe's point. And then, once they're done, Danny, no button in. Button in. You keep back to the it. car. And <laughs> um, we're going to let uh, the guys do their point. And once they're done, I'm going to do my point, And then you're going to do yours, Danny. And we're going to debate and have a little chat after. So, Harley, when you're ready, right. um, off you go. So I don't think that it is the injuries that are obviously causing our poor form. I think people are still forgetting that a good 60, 60, 65% of our squad is brand new to the team. And it's 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 a tough one because it, you forget players have got to gel to the system. Yeah. And we may not even attack. I'm pretty sure Joe's going to go into back tactics. We might, it doesn't look like we've found the perfect system yet. Yeah. The, the same thing happened last year. We got a few knocks. Granted, obviously not as many as currently, and we we hit hit a rut, but then we found a formation that worked, and it worked really well. So much so that if it probably wasn't for that, we would would have finished lower end of the top top half of the table, probably eleventh or twelfth. So. Uh, Again, if John wants to go on to what he thinks is... Uh... Yeah, so, I mean, you mentioned there, you said that we could make the point that Dino's tactics were poor. I wouldn't say that at all. I think, you know, plenty of people would want to slate him. I don't think that's the case at all. I think, as Harley just said, our team was very new last year in terms of the spine of it. It's a very similar situation this year, and not just that. We've got Oldfield come in sort of as a new coach in a way. You know, the situation was a bit unclear with him last year and he's only there for a while. Sampson, who is going to have a huge impact on the way a team plays. I don't think people realise how much of a uh, a difference it makes when no, you've got so- a coach that's dictating. You're, I'm pretty sure he's pretty involved in the, the attack and the build-up. Uh, Sam- so- his- sorry to yeah. uh, Sampson's doing a lot of one-to-one coaching yeah. by the sounds of things. He's, he's really still putting out. a stamp on it. And then what Dino said in the, uh, in the interview last night from the game at Southend, you know, Ilias Chair, actually, in the first few games he came in, he wasn't 100%. And we're seeing that with Paul Taylor a little bit. He looks great and everyone, you know, everyone's saying, oh, he's great in the build-up, but the final touch isn't there. I think, I mean, he hasn't played football for a long time, so maybe that is an injury point, but he needs time to know where Guthrie's going to be running and where, you know, the sort of way he wants to play off Newton or how he wants to do it. So I think once the system has gelled, once we've got time as a squad together, I think we'll start to, uh, we'll be all right. Okay, so good points one. made. Uh, I like the way we just sat back yeah. with our kind of armour there, Danny, kind of refueled. Uh, would you like me to go first, Danny? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, okay. I disagree. 
Do you? I leave you alone. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh <laughs> every time I say that. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, it's yeah, part and parcel. But no, I disagree. I think that the injury list is a, a massive issue to our form. I think that m- my point is that if you have a look at the injury list, there's a lot of big players out there missing. You You know, you've got the Dentons, you've got the Nugents, all injured. I happen to think that if Denton and Nugent were playing, I don't actually think uh, those those results would have possibly happened. Um, and, and I think this injury list at the minute, it's really, really causing a massive problem within the team. My other point is as well, is that... Because we've got this big injury list at the minute, Dino's having to play a lot of these new players. You know, he's having to play a lot of these new players. And I think that because he's playing a lot of these new players, a lot of new players playing with other new players, and that takes time in itself for the team to gel and fully get going. So I think that if we did have a lot of these injured players in the team now, I don't necessarily think that we would be going through this really poor start to the season. I think that actually... Again, if you if we had the Nugents, we had the Dentons, or even the Kennedys, if you want to throw Kennedy in there, I think that actually we we'd be doing a lot better than we are at the minute. And it, and for that as well, I I feel a little bit for Dino because he's getting a lot of stick at the minute, and I do feel for him because I don't think he's got the players on a huge running regime where he's running a mad at the training pitch. I just think it's unfortunate and I do feel for him a little bit because um, I don't think all of this is his fault and I think the injury list is a, is a big concern. Danny, I'm going to pull you in to make your point on this debate, mate. Yeah, like, obviously Dino is trying. Um, we are missing a lot of big players. You know, I can name a lot of them that are on the injury list. Obviously, we had about four or five last night that carried injuries. You know, Carter, uh, Salupe, um, who said I believe had an injury, cuff, but so you know there's four there that carried injuries last night. Um, also Nugent and Denton over pre-season, which are very very big players for our squad. Now I rate Denton highly, and you know I feel if he was at left back in these last three games, you know I agree we would have got a result. Mm. Um, you know Nugent's a big loss because him and Cuthbert are so used to to each other you know they're a great partnership and you know mm. Terence and Cuthbert are not used to playing with each other because we didn't see much of Terence last season did, did we mm. until the last six games of last season so yeah it's just Dino's point. having to play players in the wrong positions for example filled in against Salford mm. um, Sanupe you know been getting bullied in that central role well, that's yeah, it, isn't so it? In the Salford game, he had to play fielding, didn't he? Because yeah, he said that we had no other left side of the pitch. And it's made a big effect. I, I want to ask a question to, to Joanne Harley. I don't mind whoever answers it first, but an interesting one, because obviously we disagree on this debate. Um, now, I will take Saturday, for example, late Orient away, really tough match. Say, for example, we get there and we find out that Cuthbert isn't fit, Sanupe isn't fit, Stokes. Parrot isn't fit, Stokes isn't fit, so, um, Charlie Cutter isn't fit. Would you then say that, say for example, we lost that match, would you then say that that loss would be down to the injury list? Or would you say vice versa? Of course, injuries are going to play a factor. But to suggest that the tactics, the new way the squad's gelling together isn't going to make a difference, I think isn't quite right. But also, I know we're going to touch on him later. I understand we had a, a late change to our lineup at left back last minute. Yeah. And we had a player pulled in. You know, you said didn't have a choice but to play fielding. Mm. We've got those players there. We're seeing how we're seeing how good our youth system is now. With you know, we we saw Arthur and before and Ben Wilmot coming in, and mm. now Fernandez. And he looked. I know we're going to go on. He looked amazing last night. Mm. And there's a, there's a player that he, we, he was he, my man in the match. He, last he was, night. Yeah, Fernandez was excellent. And incredible. would he if those injuries hadn't happened? Would he have been playing last night? Mm. So not a left back. I mean, my understanding from Dino is that he didn't even. No, he was starting until he turned up and I think was walking around the Lamex. So. He was walking around, yeah, no, I did read that today. Yeah. I mean, the, the way I feel about it is, I, I feel that with a, a few of these injured players, if they were in the team, I don't think those results would have happened the way they did. No. I mean, what, what, what do you think, Harley, on that? You, um, I know it's disagreement s- corner, but... I think, the way uh, I sat- think. Saturday's going to be a weird one. Yeah. B- because it's... Um, I find it really hard to put it down to injuries, but then again, at the same time, I find it really hard to put it down to brand new tactics. Yeah, I think, like like Josh said, it's going to be a mix of both. Obviously, yeah. you're, obviously, you're going to miss your senior players. Mm. Do we need to work harder on recruitment as well? You know, people. I know, I know 
the chairman and Dino are looking at people, I'm sure, but actually as well, could our, could our recruitment be a bit better? Just just for me to play devil's advocate. Do you know bit. what? It's a really interesting point, that because I do find it very peculiar that we signed two players that were already injured. Yeah, well, that to be honest, that goes back to my point about the physios. I think mm. Dino was clearly unhappy. Again, we don't know the full picture. He was clearly mm. unhappy with the decisions that were made medically. First about Kennedy... Uh, I think he was. He was, he he was, was again meant, injured, wasn't he? Well, he was meant to. Right again. This is from this is from what Dino said publicly. So yeah. all, he was meant to have an operation. Am I right? Oh, I think. Or I he think was, that's the he case. Was, yeah. He was offered an operation, turned it down. Whether that was him or medical staff. So again, you know, players go through medicals and screenings. Whether that mm. process hasn't been done quite right, and that's partly down to our inconsistency in the physio department. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, you know, it's a it's a really interesting debate. Uh, I've seen a lot of it on social media. Well, actually, after Exeter and more so even after last night, it is an interesting debate because, again, us as fans, we don't see what goes on the training pit. So it is interesting to debate that whether you know the injury list is the reason or if it's not. Um, I will be putting an actual poll out on Twitter. Now, this is something that I did trust Reese Donnelly with. Oh, no. But unfortunately, Reese did not come up trumps <laughs> with the poll. So we are very sorry to the listeners that couldn't get involved in the poll because Reese <laughs> didn't know what he was doing, but he forgot to do it. So I am going to do the poll tonight and I would like uh, everyone to let us know who you thought won the debate. Was it Harley or Joe or do you agree with me and Danny? And we will get a lead table of this debate. Um, I'm not trusting Reese again. No, I think. <laughs> I'm not. No, sorry, Reese. So we give him so many, and yeah, <laughs> hasn't come up. <laughs> yeah. But no, really well done. Really good, Harley and Folly disagreement corner. We'll be back in two weeks for another debate, and hopefully, we'll have our league table, which will be good. Tidy. Now, obviously, uh, we've mentioned our two, well, our last two matches: our League Two lost to Extra and our League Cup lost to South End. Now, obviously. Uh, we have got a very big match coming up this Saturday. Well, to be honest, we've got a very big end of the month. Uh, but we do start at Leighton or in away this Saturday, three o'clock kickoff. Um, now it's a it's an interesting match because again we don't know the injury list and we don't know who's going to be playing or who's not. In my opinion, I think it's really big to get a result this Saturday. I think that if we had another loss. Yeah. then I think Dino is going to come under a, an amount of unreal pressure along with the players. I'll, I'll come to you on this first, Joe. Um, you know, what do we want to see Saturday? Uh, obviously, we want to see a win, but what I mean is <sighs> we yeah. just want a result. Right? Even yeah. if it's a point, I we'd think take we, a point, wouldn't we? I think, actually, to go back to South End last night to make a point about this weekend, I think it was great we scored last night. Irrelevant yep. of the result, I think when when you go three games, not just without wins, you go three games without scoring, that becomes not just something that we talk about on Twitter on here, but something the players start to think about, and something that in the change room they're going, we've got to get a goal now. So the fact we've almost broken that barrier a little bit, yep. it's a bit positive, but yeah, we, we need a result. We need, for me, we need a good attacking I want to really have, have a go at Ori, you know, let's get that yeah, let's not sit start. there and, and try and get through the let's match let's properly yeah. have a go at them let's score one or two goals and let's get a result you know Orient everything that went on with them you know terribly over summer um, obviously had an impact on their club Yeah, and they haven't had the best of starts I know we're, I know we're I know, right well, down there but they you know they are I know we said this they are there for the table I know I, do you know I completely agree um, for me I'd take a point if it's a result yeah. on the board take it for me, looking at these fixtures in August, you know, Orient, Bradford, Mansfield, even Macclesfield are doing well. Um, for me now, with the injury list and all the concerns we've got, I just take three points from August and just get a win there yeah. on the table. Um, I mean, Harley, what, what do you think about this Saturday? A tough game. Uh, Joe alluded to something there, though. I know we talk about us, but Orient haven't had a great start. No, they they struggle to beat Cheltenham. They? They've lost their last two matches. They lost last week. Well. Exactly. I mean, what I do think, you think about think, it this Saturday? I think their their win was a, obviously a, a bit of a one off because they had something really powerful to fight for in terms of obviously the stuff with Justin Edinburgh in, in yeah. the first league game and all that. Not putting it their win down to that, but yeah. I mean that. No, I think I think it's a fair point that you that, know that's they, they obviously were playing really, with a lot really, of emotion in that game. And yeah, they really wanted to win that one. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I always I always struggle with laying Orient whenever we play them because it's it's a very hard game to judge because we don't we always seem to we always seem to do alright against Lane Orient mm. but we'll either draw or, or we will lose I don't well, think we've well beaten, this is it because the last beaten. the last two matches I think we've lost 3-0 there yeah. on both occasions yeah. so we haven't had and if you put the checker trade into play, we lost oh, that and all. So yeah, we haven't so actually got exactly. a good record there. Gonna go well. Yeah, it's going to go well. Uh, Danny, thoughts on the match, mate, this Saturday? Obviously, I know 
You know, we've yeah. got no points for 23rd place. Orient the mid-table with three. I mean, how do you see it playing out this Saturday? It's a big match for us, isn't it, Abara? Uh, it's our biggest game of the season already, I believe. Um, yeah, it's a massive game. Three losses in a row, obviously. Just get something. Mm. Even a point. Just get something, you know. Just attack, attack, attack. You know, don't play so deep. Yeah. Just put in a performance that the fans are going to be delighted about. Mm. You know, I, I imagine all four of us are going Saturday. Yes. Oh, we are. Hundred percent. I will be I going to London yes. early. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'll be having a very nice word with my boss. He will be, uh, <laughs> <laughs> will be doing me a favour. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to... I know that we're 23rd and we've lost our opening two matches and got knocked out of the cup. I'm going to wear that Burger King ketchup and mustard with pride on Saturday. Pride. As, as me and Amy go in, we're going to go drinking from 10 o'clock. Oh, <laughs> and if we'll get wet in. If any of the stewards are listening to this, please don't come looking for us. <laughs> but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wear it with pride and hopefully we, yeah. we go there and we get a result that we can be proud about at our football well, I just want to see... <laughs> Water. I want to see... You know, the team's be able to play a full 90 minutes, you know, mm. without fail. You know, obviously, better than South End, good first half. Just a point, that's all I'm asking. Just a point, just a result, you know. Because m- my thought well on this is. For a whole 90 minutes. It, it will do the players the world of confidence if they can go there. I think there's going to be a big crowd. I've been on Orient's website and they've sold a lot of tickets already. I think yeah. actually. Um, well, I know an Orient fan that he <laughs> works in Asda in where, and uh, I, I see him in there all the time, and he was telling me they they sent out their home crowds. So I, I think it's going to be quite they hostile. They're, they're a big, they're a big people, crowd. Yeah, people people for forget this level. how big Lay and Orient yeah. are. Oh, they used to be in League One. Lay, Lay and Orient are, are a big club for a League One level. You know, mm. you look at their, even when they were in the National League last year, you look at their... Uh, yeah. The attendances they yeah. were getting. They, um, I'll always remember yeah. them beating Arsenal in the cup as well. I don't know if yeah, you remember that. Yeah. 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 But um, but no, you know, the boys need to go there, get us a result because what I fear is going there, losing our third league game in a row, and then there's a lot of pressure on Dino and the players, and then that can be a recipe Stop for disaster. Confidence, you know, if we lose. Well, that's it, and you know, if we can get a point, if we can snag a win, that's three points on the table, and we've got something to kick on through September. Um, so it's going to be a tough game. Uh, it'd be great if we got a big crowd there in the away end. We know that the home fans are going to be very hostile there in London. Um, one thing I'm actually looking forward to seeing is uh, over the summer I was watching a late Norian kind of documentary on, on YouTube. I think I spoke about it in the first podcast. This is the Cop and Ninety one. Uh, no, it's the Dream Team. No, yeah, the so Cop Ninety was my league. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, you've seen the Cop the Cop Ninety uh, ones really. Oh, good. I haven't seen. I've seen the Dream Team. Uh, <coughs> there was there was five episodes and they followed Late Orient in the conference, obviously winning the championship last year. And uh, obviously they got they had an Italian owner who kind of run them into the grounds and they got relegated. And, and then all of a sudden they had a fan takeover who's like one of the owners now. And they've got this American. He's called Kent Teague. Right? Oh, he's from yeah. Texas. Yeah, he's right? great, isn't he? He yeah. is one of the most I'm going to say bonkers. Owners yeah, okay. I've ever seen in football, and I'm going to be he's looking mental. out for him. Absolutely, I'm going to be looking mental. out for him Saturday because he's on the gantry, right? You'll see the gantry opposite the UA, and it's up top. And he stands up there, and he goes mad, like, like he lives with the game. It's and I'm going to try and look that's, out. That's for him. the sort of owner you should be having at a club. Someone who's passionate yeah. about it, not just there for the money. But but you know what? I really hope that Phil Wallace turns up there with his Wallace Borough shirt on, and, and, yeah, and gives <laughs> it some in, 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 in the end. That'd be great. And you know, if we can get a result. You can put a bit of passion back into our club. That would be uh, that would be. Why excellent. I'll buy you a drink if you turn up? <laughs> yeah, please, Phil. You know, please turn up. We don't want you in America. Please turn up. Um, but no, really good to discuss the game coming. Uh, now we're going to quickly fly through this because we nearly been going forty five minutes and we've still got so much to put in. Mm-hmm. But we all get through it quickly. Uh, right, team selections for Saturday. Now uh, I'm going to quickly come to everyone's team selection again. We'll fly through this really, really quickly. Uh, I'll come to Joe because Joe is the guest today. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, no, pressure. no pressure, Joe. You know we don't want this to mess up on it. Uh, Joe, I want you to go through uh, the team that you think should play for Borough Saturday, and I want to have a quick thirty-second minute description of why you choose that team. So my team, I'll tell you now, is going to cause some controversy. Oof. What I've done, I'm Arthur, right, right to the right back. <laughs> he's, in, he's in goal, actually. Um, <laughs> what I've done is work off the injury list that we've got, and I'm. Open Feel free Ooh. to correct me. Okay. And I'm assuming that Dino is being 100% truthful when he says about players that are out. Because I... No, go on. No, so I was just going to say, is this including... When you say injury, is this after South End? After South End. Oh, okay. So well, we this are... Be interesting. This, this is good. a very, very short squad. Because for the listeners, if you think Scott Cuthbert, Parrots, and Upe and Carl went off the other night, Stokes... Houston. 
Sins out. Who sins out as well? Oh, God, so. This is going to be interesting. Joe, would you like to kind of awe us with I'm, your. I'm lost on my team now, though, because so. I'm. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, boys. We're going to have to yeah. quickly no, no, screw no, no, it no, This is why I've done this. Yeah. I've done, I'm, playing, I'm playing devil's advocate, so we've got different. Well, use this team selection. Thing, me and Farley have got the exact same team. Well, well, have you done the same? I've done exactly the same. I can see your team. I imagine we've done the same formation. Okay, right, go on, Joe. Please inspire us all. goal, obviously. I've got four at the back. I've got Luther Wilding. I've got TVC after a great performance. I've got Saws at left centre. Oh, he did go there. So oh, right. Right. <coughs> He's He's the okay. as as mine. I've got Joel Rollinson at left back. Who oh, potentially yeah. can have a okay, yeah. We've got the man of the moment, Fernandez, in centre mid. <laughs> Sorry, no. no, no I no, think no, this is so great. No, no, got, I think this is got great. Got Arthur Ironton playing long side. Okay. Head of them, we've got Taylor. And we're going all guns blazing, firing <laughs> hot start, Guthrie up top, Cowley and Newton playing off him. There are available players. I'm sorry. He's going for it. And I tell you I what, like that team. Our bench, I actually our like bench that team. is going to look full bolt. Do you know what? Full bolt on the. My my only thing with that would be I would change Saws with Stokes. Stoke, I'm Stokes is out in my in my, in my oh, alternate sorry. reality. In his, alter, in, his, in his football manager line up. Not football manager. This is what Dino said in the interview on Tuesday. <laughs> Why is Dino's lying? I well, I'm not. I've never accused Dino. Of lying. No, 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 we wouldn't say that. Um, um, that's a, Do you know what? T- I like that. I'm sorry, that's the team that. I do like that team. Like, I do like that. Do you know that team tells me? What? That team tells me that we're going to go there, and it doesn't matter who's playing. We are going to give it. You know, absolutely. And I tell you what, who would. You know, late, I'm assuming Leighton Orient play four at the back. Leighton Orient's two centre backs when they see Guthrie, Cowley, and Newton coming up. They are, <laughs> and they, are as well. they, I mean, ta- they are getting kicked on Saturday. You know that. Is that, that is Ka- very Cowley, inspiring. I've been, I've been really impressed. He, with him. He's looked good. You know, he, he came yeah, in. I've liked Cowley. Yeah. He's he looked like a real promise. He looks like yeah. he just needs game time. Yeah, yeah. He, he even did. All, he was put out wide against. Uh, even if it's in the check of trade, you know, like just any game time. Get, get in game time. I like that team. Now, do you know what that I'm is? Gonna get, I'm going to get a lot. When of I heard Fernandez now, in the centre, I thought, "Oh my word, well, he's, he's a going natural, He's a naturally, you know, good on the ball, player. isn't he? He looked great on the ball. I like that. I like that. Uh, Danny, quickly fly through. It's going to be really quick, mate. We've been nearly going for it. No, that was It was great. Quickly fly through. We've been going about fifty minutes. Well, so I've gone with four three three, same as Joe. Uh, Farman in goal on number one. Yeah. Luther at right back. Uh, if Cuthbert's not fit, I've gone with Saws yeah. at centre back. Uh, actually, yeah, same I do same believe he played at centre back last night when Cuthbert yeah. went he, he moved into I that think role, he, he yeah. He played there a little bit of Palace and the Wimbledon. I think he's had, that's not a new position for him. Yeah, Sorry. he's a central defensive midfielder oh. and you can play in that position. Yeah. TBC, can't argue with that. He's been phenomenal. Um, left back, uh, I've gone with Rollinson. Yeah. Um, my midfield. I've actually put Carter because I think he might be fit. Yeah. He didn't look that bad. It looked like he was just taking off as a precaution rather yeah. than an actual injury. Uh-huh. Um, I've chucked Parrot in there. I think he'll be all right. Yeah. Because you know he came off injured before, didn't he? Yeah. Um, who was it against Exeter? Was it? I think Salford. I think he's got a recurring hamstring problem. Yeah, he seems to be. Okay, uh, see, and I want him to get that sorted, so I'd kind of want him to not to play. And that sounds bad, but um, no, that's not a. Uh, I want him to get fit because I think a fully fit Dean Parrott could be one of the best midfielders in the league. Yeah, um, go on, then, Dan. Finish the rest of your team. Uh, off Chuck Fernandez in midfield as well. I think he mm-hmm. deserves uh, a start. Okay. You know, fantastic performance. Our best player last night. Yeah. Why not give him a chance? Yep, I like so that. I put him in there. I mean, three forwards. Uh, Danny Newton's got to play. Yeah. Uh, Guthrie and Taylor. And Taylor? Really yeah. good team there, Dan. So like a 4-3-3 three, three then almost. It's Yeah. Yeah, like that. Okay, Harley, uh, your team, mate. So who, I think, like I say, I think we've already gone for the uh, same thing. On the premise that we hope players are fit, the yeah. optimistic side of the table. Yeah, I think I think Joe and Danny should be the realistic, yeah. and then I think yeah. me and Harley should be the optimistic. So I've gone to, I've gone, I've gone four three one two rather than four three three. Okay. So I've gone Farman and goal. Although I would like to see. Uh, Not this again, Bastian. 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 I like him. He looks scared, doesn't he? Great. I'm, I'm yeah, Farman has to go. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would like to see Bastian give yeah. him see, a shot. I thought he was going to play him last night. Yeah, that was the sort of game he was... I was a bit... Oh, I would have liked to see him. I but, think... Um, actually, go on. Good shout. Yeah. Good shout. Um, good um, shout. Right back, Wilding, obviously. I don't think that leaves any explanation. Yeah. Two centre-halves. I've gone with TVC and hopefully Cuthbert's fit. Yeah. If not, I'll drop Saws in there like like the other boys. Left back, I've gone Fernandez. 
Mm. I think he's got. To, I think he's got to start because I think last night showed that yeah. real quality, real quality. Yeah. Um, because and um, reason you look at what happened to Ben Wilmot came in straight away because we didn't have a lot of other options. Yeah, good point. I played phenomenal and ended up getting a move to Watford. Yeah. And then cent- central players have gone. Ho- hopefully, who's in fit? Yeah. Uh, Saws in the middle, but like I say, I can switch the two yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. two out. And then Ironton, yep. just just because we don't have a lot of other options, mm-hmm. and then Taylor just behind Guthrie and Newton. Okay, yeah, no, I like that like team. That. I think it's really good. Um, my team, I I put my team down, but this is on the basis without the injuries. But I will quickly just tinker them in. Uh, my team, Paul Farman, no brainer for me. Right back, Luther Wilding. My centre arms at the minute, I've gone for Van Cooten and Cuthbert. Nice with Stokes at left back. If Cuthbert isn't fit and Stokes is for me Stokes with Van Cooten with Fernandez at left back if Stokes isn't fit either then I'd go Luther Van Cooten at Sauls and Fernandez uh, as a back four uh, originally in the midfield again if Cuthbert or Stokes is fit in the middle I've gone Sauls just sitting in front of the back four and then I've got three in front of Sauls which is Carter Parrott and Hussein again hopefully <laughs> they are fit uh, and then my two up, to- uh, my two up top series, Guthrie and Taylor. Uh, again, that is on the basis if people are fit. Um, if they're not fit, then Arthur Warrington, I'm pretty sure, would go in there. Yeah. And Sanu play. Well, again, Sanu plays at Angels, unbelievable. Um, but hopefully, again, we have got a few players there that can go into the team. Um, really good teams, lads. Diverse yeah, nice. as well. Good yeah, that was mix, quite isn't it? a really good mix, that was. Um, so now we're coming nearly to the end of the podcast. We've been going 50 minutes, which is... Fantastic. So hopefully listeners will enjoy this. Uh, now, obviously, we're going to come on to the League 2 Roundup section. Now, obviously, we weren't the only match last Saturday. Uh, there were other matches in the league. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to quickly read out the results in the league. We'll quickly discuss and pick out some, some good results or some results that surprise us. I'm going to quickly run through them. Obviously, we, we lost 1-0 to Exeter. Uh, we had Grimsby 1-1 against Bradford City. Cambridge nil, Newport nil, Cheltenham four, Scunthorpe one, Crawley two, Salford nil. Quite happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Macclesfield three, Leighton Orient nil, Mansfield two, Morecambe two, Oldham one, Crew two, Plymouth one, Colchester nil, Port Vale one, Northampton one, Swindon three, Carlisle two, and Walsall one, Forest Green one. Now. When I look at these results, there seems to be a lot of the teams that lost on the first day have then picked up yeah. the result. Any results that surprise Ch- you a little Chelsea bit? Chelsea Scuffle. Yeah. Chelsea Scuffle. Yeah, yeah, 4 1. Big one. Cheltenham seem to be playing quite well this year. They seem to have had, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, they seem to have had a pretty good start. And actually, speaking yeah. to some of their fans before the start of the season, they were a fan base not too dissimilar from ours. I mean, they had a. Yeah. a probably a worse or a much worse season than we did yeah. but they all seemed really optimistic on Twitter and social media that seemed like a fan base that felt mm. they got a bit See, of a run going because I, I, I can't remember whether or not I put yeah as a draw that game you did yeah. one one yeah, yeah. but I, I, I could have saw, like I said I saw the children getting something out of that yeah. but Four ones another level. Yeah, scum down to win. Do you know what I have? Um, I have a uh, there's a guy that at work who I work with. He's a head teacher and uh, he's a scum fan. And we have a bit of banter. I'm obviously a Stevenage fan. And he's a scum thought, and um, we we had a discussion over the summer. And he was telling me about scum thoughts team, and he was telling me how they're in absolute dire yeah. straits at the minute. They've lost all these players. They're now having a bit similar to us in the fact where we've got a lot of injuries. They're having to play players from the youth and Scunthorpe don't look great at the minute. Obviously, I know they're bottom, we're above them. Yeah. Obviously, no points either. But yeah, they're a team that are going to struggle, I think, this season. I think we said that in the pre-season <laughs> yeah, as well. Were, a lot of tables they were down um, there. A result that I want to pick out because I think they're going to have a really good season this season. Yeah. Macclesfield Town. Yeah. 3-0 and obviously Macclesfield they lost to Exeter on the opening day but I watched the highlights of that Macclesfield were all over Exeter yeah. I don't know how they didn't get a draw and they've thrashed Lake Norwich 3-0 um, Archibald scored for Macclesfield who was on yeah. trial with us yep. great goal as well yeah. great yeah. finish so um, Macclesfield that's a, and that's good for us because Orient have lost 3-0 yeah. a really good result there um, others to pick out uh, Newport and Morecambe sorry yeah, I, mean, I was just going to talk about this. Yeah. Go for it, Joe. No, well, they're they're a team that I think they're <coughs> sort of uh, they're almost a sort of perennial joker league too. You know, every year everyone's got them to go down, but they almost oh. somehow see they somehow scrape themselves through. Uh, it's and I'm just doing just doing my very very uh, low level research. They've just signed or loaned 
George Tanner from Man United, who's wow. that fairly highly uh, this rated. This is Morecambe. Yes. Morecambe have just wow. uh, on a season long loan from United, nineteen year old left back, played at under twenty threes. I mean, that's a really George Tanner, very good. <laughs> player. Do you think? Do you think that's almost like an Elias Chair type of? I mean, loan could, well, could potentially. But you know, I mean, any player that comes on a loan, it's a bit of a gamble. The whole. Loan I think system yeah. Yeah. when you loan a player in from the Premier League, I, f- I find the top six teams, their youth players are very, very high level youth yeah. players. Yeah. And then when you start going for say six, six downers, yeah. you look at you start getting players like Moses Bukhazi, quite clearly got ability. Yeah, Luke yeah. I think you've yeah. got those players. I think in the Premier League under twenty three is a very very different competition. Yeah, league. obviously. Yeah. There's you see, you, know, you saw Maxi come in last year and he, you know, Maca- because I look, I looked at Bukhazi the first couple of games he came in, I thought, oh, you know what? He technically, looked, he looked good, didn't he? Technically, he was very sound, and then mm. it just fell apart. Yeah. I completely agree. Really good point that though, Joe, because uh, yeah, that is a really good signing for Morecambe. And do you know what? Um, it's really funny that because they drew 2-2 against Mansfield and then they played Mansfield last night. Yeah. And what was the final score last night? And I think they, they won. won. Yeah. They won a penalty. So Morecambe, they're, fair play to them. They're, 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 they're still finished 20 seconds. And this is, do you know what? One thing that sticks out to me here is, and I'm going to relate, relate this back to our borough, is... Do you know what? We've got three really tough matches coming up, but the teams that we're playing haven't actually started that well. No. Orient have won, lost, no. and then lost in the League Cup. Mansfield drew against Morecambe, uh, drew against Newport. Yeah. Bradford drawn two. So actually, the, yeah. I think actually our most difficult game is possibly Macclesfield. Yeah, funny enough, you've got I an argument it was Mansfield, who I actually think are going to struggle this year. Just to know. yeah, well, they lost Tyler Walker, didn't they? Yeah. To where did he go? Lincoln. 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 That was it. Lincoln. He scored. Didn't he? Manager's exactly. come in. Yeah, I, I actually think for us, I know that we're having a lot of difficulties at the minute. I think we've got a good chance to actually pick up points. Yeah. <laughs> These yeah. are actually matches we go. Um, but <laughs> so no, we're really Tuesday, Tuesday night next week as well, aren't we? Uh, that's, that's right. Yeah, Bradford. Really that's, that's a massive thing because they're going to bring. You know, Bradford will bring the full. I've heard. I've heard. Uh, well, I heard, I saw, I went on the forums, and apparently they want to bring down over 2,000. They, yeah, they, I mean, they bring in 1,800. So I, that is going to be. Great. So the atmosphere next Tuesday. So and I really want to ask all Steve fans yeah, listening, brilliant. your next Tuesday night is booked up. You're coming to Bradford. <laughs> yeah. Bring full noise, full limbs. And remember, be there. And remember, buy your ticket prior because it's automated turnstiles. Um, now, I'm just going oh, yeah, to quickly call out the uh, lead table at the minute. Um, I'm going to start from bottom to top, <laughs> which is quite depressing. Uh, obviously, 24th at the minute, Scunthorpe with zero points. Uh, 23rd is Borough us no points uh, but a better goal difference than Scunthorpe 22nd we've got Oldham <laughs> again <laughs> with no points so us Scunthorpe and Oldham are the only teams not to get a point um, I am a bit got... surprised at Oldham yeah, yeah again that's another team that a lot of people have higher yeah, no, I completely agree. Completely agree. Uh, we've got Morecambe twenty first with a point. Colchester as well. A bit surprising with one point down there, drawing a loss. Uh, top of the table, very competitive. Uh, currently in first, we've got Plymouth Argyle. Two games, two wins, six points, four on the goal difference. Swindon Town started well, six points, yeah, second no place. Um, six points. Exeter City, two games, six points. <sighs> bit disappointing. Fourth, we've got Grimsby with four points. That was my dark horse for this season because they've got James yeah. Hadson, who actually scored against Bradford on the weekend, his old team. Uh, Forest Green in fifth with four points. Walsall sixth with four. Cheltenham seventh with three. And Macclesfield eighth with three. So there's a couple of teams up there that we yeah, probably wouldn't have expected. Um, so it's, it's quite competitive. Again, the great thing about this, <coughs> if we can nick a win this Saturday, three points, puts us in that mid-table position. So hopefully I'll look a bit better. Uh, now, obviously, there has been a competition that we started uh, a couple of weeks ago, just before the season started. It is a bit of a mouthful, so bear with me. Uh, the Stevenage Football Club podcast, League Two Fixture Prediction Competition. You need, you need an acronym for that, I don't you? I think we do need an acronym for that. I have done um, better than now, time. we originally started with five players, and we've had more players into the competition. Now, I don't believe Joe needs to enter. So I've, I've, The scores are here. He's got his scores picture. Now, I'm really quickly just going to run out the league table. There are now eight players. Uh, now, if you want to get involved with the prediction competition, I'm going to put out a tweet tonight of fixtures. Please tweet us back. If you don't know how to play or the point system, please uh, tweet us at the Stevenage Football Club podcast page or the Facebook page. That would be great. Three points for a correct prediction, two points for half a prediction, so getting one team scoreline correct, no points for a wrong prediction. And if you get a prediction right on Borough score, you get one extra bonus point. So, currently in eighth place, 
Sorry, it's fake. With a we whopping laugh. four we're, points. We've, with an amazing four points. Is Ollie long? <laughs> So well done, Ollie. Uh, no, no, there are prizes for the worst losers. So, Ollie, I'm not saying you're going to be there, but uh, in seventh place with 11 points, we currently have Hartley Borough. So, well done, Hartley Borough. Very good. I like the round of applause. This I feel like we should give people a round of applause. Uh, currently in sixth place with 15 points is James Walker. Well done, James. Superb. Uh, currently in fifth place, holding the helm with 19 points, Sir Danny Lusby. Well done, Danny. I would clap, but I can't anymore. <laughs> uh, currently in fourth place with 23 points is myself, Farley. Thank you, lads. Inside job. Uh, inside job, yeah, I'm tweaking the results, honestly. Uh, now, in the top three, this is where it... Now, this is very competitive. I have tweeted out the league table. It is sure really is. good. Now, in third place with 32 points, nine points ahead of me. I'm sure he's glowing about this. It's Harley Clark. Get in. Harley, that is a brilliant oh, score. Uh, now, this week. is where it gets interesting. Second place with 33 points, Aidan Cheevers. Oh, Aidan, well oh, done. Gosh, and top, also with 33 points, Ooh, third place is Patrick Jackson. Ooh. Well done, Patrick. Oh, Patrick. Um, that is a fantastic start to our uh, league table. Three people, well, two separated on a point, one separated by one. And then myself down in 423 and Danny kind of trailing in the mid table. Danny got some space to be 19. Now, we will be going through the fixtures now. We, we want people to get involved. Joe, you were going to start the uh, predictions off tonight again because you are our guest. Oh, now, am, I going to, am I going to kick things off? You are going to kick things oh, off because oh. the guests are rules. Now, um, we are going to go through our predictions. Again, uh, anyone that wants to get involved, I will tweet us tonight and Facebook us. Please uh, get us ready for uh, our predictions to Joe. Am I going to join you to go all the way through? or just All the way through, mate. These are all the uh, games. I'll preface this by saying I don't know what I'm talking about. Off you go. Uh, are we doing the Tuesday night games as well? I haven't done Tuesday we... I will tweet out something privately. You can... Love yeah, it. Because we have been going an hour. My God. Cool. Uh, I'll do the full radio. Full I'm whack. Bradford 2. Oldham, one. Oh, he sounds like the golf talk sport. That is taking your role in. Okay, good, no, you good. Take my role. Sorry, is that your... Sorry. <laughs> you do, do it better, Joe. I do listen to the podcast. <laughs> you know, I do listen do to the better. podcast. <laughs> Go for it, Joe. You keep I've it that way. Carlisle, one. Mansfield, one. <laughs> Colchester, two, one over Cambridge. Again, they struggled there. I've got Crew two, Colchester, two. Exeter are getting a one-all draw. Do you want to say that again? Because Crew aren't playing. Do you mean Walsall? Crew are playing. Coach I've been start, badly saying. informed. <laughs> You've been Walsall, don't you? Crew are playing. Do you know what? This is how much confidence I've got. The result will still be the same. But Joe is bringing a very diverse look onto this podcast. I'm loving so it. So much so he's creating games that aren't existing. I think we should get a feature for Joe in the future of, of Joe's games or something Joe just, similar. I think well, we should. Well, I'll tell you what, this is going to be good then. Because uh, <laughs> Go I, had, you know, I had an assistant in the car uh, who let me down on these fixtures. Oh, dear me. I mean, wonder who that could be. Well, I'm kind to blame someone else, you see. Yeah. Uh, are Exeter playing Swindon this week? That's the one. That's good. Well, I've got them drawing 1-1. One, one. Uh, I've got Forest Green 3. Grimsby 1. Ooh. Big 1. Yeah. I've got Orient 1. Stevenage. Two. Oh, two good one. man! I've got a two-one. Good got man! See Come on, a bar. See the early comeback. <laughs> Morecambe are, are putting one 0 over Cheltenham, and what I think will be a yeah. great game. Yeah. You know, two yeah. perhaps unexpected sides. Game of the week: Plymouth putting three past Newport at home. We're yeah. going to get two. Yeah. Uh, I've got no- Macclesfield two, Northampton one. God, these are very so, similar to mine. Joe. Salford, oh, that's good. Pop. Very similar to mine. Oh. Ones I, think, I think Joe's been looking at my no, <laughs> no, <laughs> time stamped. Yeah. Uh, Port Vale have beaten Salford 2 0 at home. <sighs> um, if you have me back on, Salford aren't winning a single game this year. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Scum are getting a 0 0 draw at home to Crawley. Yeah, and is that, your, is that all of them? That is all of them. That is all of them. Can, can I just ask? You've done Borough to win 2 1. Is that with the team selection that That's you've chosen? Team. So um, who's getting the goals from that? Louis so, Fernandez and Sauce? You know what, what I've got is uh, I've got us going down 1 0. I think we're going to go. <laughs> at half time Dino's going to get the hair dryer out Samson is going to get a few of his good adjectives we've heard on Twitter Lowfield's going to be and there and I think Curtis Guthrie is going to be scoring goals oh as always think, everywhere he goes everywhere he goes you know, amongst other chief. things I think he's going to get one and I think well, maybe that'll be a I think maybe a nice corner maybe you know TBC celebrating oh, the new contract new bang. proper you know Harry oh, Maguire-esque I love that fantastic Joe. brilliant prediction uh, Danny flies for yours mate been going just over an hour we're going to try and finish this up soon Okay, so I've gone with Leighton Orient 1, Stevenage 1. 
Oh, yeah. Oh. I'm going to be realistic. Oh. Oh. Judas! <laughs> Traitor. It's a point, so. <laughs> points win prizes. Better than nothing. <laughs> Even when you finish 23rd. <laughs> yeah. It's better than 24th. Well, I mean, look at the league prediction table. If you finish last, you still win a prize, so. At least a point I'll be happy with. Yeah. Okay, Bradford 3, Oldham 0. Uh, Carlisle 1, Mansfield 2. Yeah. Colchester 2, Cambridge 1. Crew 1, Warsaw 0. Exeter 2, Swindon 2. Forest Green 1, Grimsby 1. Morecambe 1, Cheltenham 2. Now, this one, you'll be surprised, but yeah. I actually think they're going to beat them. Newport 2, Plymouth 1. Okay. Ooh, okay. Different. I like that. Unique. They rested their team. They're very good at home. They? Oh, I can see that. Yeah. Told, not, told the fans and not to turn up. And what's all this about really Wilfred Boney as well? I think he's been, he's been yeah. training with them for fitness. Hasn't Imagine he? if Wilfred Boney, like the Boney, sorry, signed for Newport. <laughs> what a forward line. Well, well, that's that. play. He's got some investigating <laughs> to do that. <laughs> They're like the new Salford. Go on, Dan. So I've gone for that. Northampton 3, Macclesfield 0. Ooh. Salford 2, Port Vale 1. Yeah. Scumfork 2, Crawley 0. Lovely, really nice. good fixtures, Dan. Uh, Harley, yours? Uh, I'm going 2 0 Bradford at home to Oldham. Yeah. Uh, I'm going 1 0 Carlisle at home to Mansfield. Okay. I'm going 1 0 Cambridge away at Colchester. Because they're in real good form at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So that's beat, a good one. beat Brentford lost, I've been there at Brentford. Yeah, that's a big. Um, crew, I'm going 2 1 Walsall. Exeter, I'm going to be Swindon 2-1. Mm. Forest Green to lose 2-1 at home to Grimsby. Yeah. Us to win 1-0 away at Leighton Orient. Oh. Ooh, nice. Morecambe to beat Cheltenham 1-0. Newport, Plymouth 1-0. Yeah. Northampton to beat Macclesfield 2-1. Yeah. Salford and Port Vale to draw 1-0. Yeah. And then I'm going to put Crawley to beat it's going for 1 0. Mm, really good predictions there, Harley. Yeah, really, really good yeah. mix there. But like, these are all very similar. It's, oh, it's annoying. It's almost it's as if we know what we're talking about. about. It's almost oh, like God. I've got my list here and you're kind of. No, gold as well. Yeah. Uh, my predictions. Now, I'm going to start with the Borough match. Uh, I've been very torn about this match because. Obviously, a lot of people would say, oh, Leighton Orient to win, but Leighton Orient haven't been great the last two matches. I know that we haven't, obviously, but I think there's obviously reasons for that. I have gone Leighton Orient 1. Borough two. Oh, Ooh, I'm going for that. three points. Originally, before you, before we started, I had one one locked in my mind. Can I, can I ask you the same question that you asked me? Who are your two scorers for Stevens? My two goal scorers. I am going to be going for Curtis Guthrie. Both, both own goals. Oh. Both yeah. own goals. <laughs> Far I'm going but Curtis, I will throw it in Curtis there. I will throw scorer. it in there. If Cuthbert's fit, I put money on him to score against his old team. Yeah, and though you know, Cuthbert's main threat is set pieces, and our yeah. set pieces haven't been true. We haven't Not exactly. Standard, so. But I remember seeing Cuthbert at late night. It's going to be weird if he's fit having him back there on Saturday. Yeah. I fancy him to score a header. Um, my predictions are as follows: I've gone Bradford two, Oldham one, Carlisle one, Mansfield nil. Uh, next game, I've gone for a bit of a different one. <laughs> I don't understand why I put this now, but I've gone Colchester three, Cambridge one. <laughs> <laughs> I was just having a good start, but there you go. Uh, Crew 2, Walsall 2. I've got Exeter 1, Swindon 1, Forest Green 1, Grimsby 2, Morecambe 2, Cheltenham 0. I've then gone for Newport 1, Plymouth 3, Northampton 1, Macclesfield 2, Salford 1, Port Vale 0, and Scunthorpe 1, Crawley 1. So I've gone for nice. a, a mix of goals, a home and away. A few draws in there, um, but... Uh, but no, really good fix to this. Again, I will be tweeting out and Facebooking out uh, the predictions and the league, t- uh, league table and matches up this weekend. Please get involved if you want to get involved and tweet us privately or Facebook us privately to uh, get a lowdown on the rules. Now, we are coming to the end of the podcast. Last week, for an hour and eight minutes. Now, this is a very Ooh. long podcast, so we're very sorry for the listeners that's gone on for so long. But if you've got a two hour commute, well, it's not better to listen to, as Joe said earlier, you know. Um, now, we are coming on to the fans Q&A section. Now, we do this section every week. It gives the supports a chance to ask the panel questions, and we will answer those questions. Now, we have got a lot, I will be honest. When We've covered some of these questions. We have though. covered some of these, and we can fly through them, but the original uh, amount that I had was 35 Bloody questions. Amazing. So, Jesus. Um, we have had a lot of questions. Now, I do believe this is obviously all the... Um, 
bad run of form we've had recently start to the division. We've got a lot of questions. I have cut it down to 10. So hopefully we can do two each and one of you each will do an extra question, but we'll figure that out. Uh, a general question for everyone. General question, yeah. Uh, come to you first, Harley. Uh, yep. Bulldog Barra has asked. Right, Bulldogs. Why can't we hold on to our physio? Is Dino too demanding? Um, I don't think Dino's too demanding, but I think he's got he's got his ideas in place, and it, obviously he needs to find the right physio who can not necessarily adapt to them, but just just be there and get on with it rather than yeah. because a lot. I don't know whether or not it's Dino's fault. Or not, it, I'm not saying it is his fault, but it seems to be a case that it's between always between Dino and the physio. Yeah. But for all we know, the physios could come in and just say, no, it's not for me, I don't like it here. Yeah. And then leave. And then leave, no, I completely yeah. agree. Um, it, is, it is difficult, I know, but it is difficult yeah. to hold on to physios at this level. Mm. It's quite a, a weird, you know, physios could earn a lot more mm. working far fewer hours than they do mm. at, at lower level football. You know, it's a, it's a big it's a big job higher up the tables, but... Yeah. Um, League Two is perhaps not the most glamorous job at times, maybe. Yeah, I completely agree. And obviously, people like doing their own businesses and stuff as yeah, well. I don't know, make exactly. a lot of money. Um, Danny, coming to you with the next question. This is from Bulldog Barra again. He's oh, put in oh. two. So I thought, you know, we like Baldur's, and Baldur's is a lovely guy. Met him many a time, we so like we're going to have two questions. Baldur's has asked, uh, which <coughs> new signings have you been disappointed with? Disappointed. Good question. Yeah, it's a very good question. Um, That's a hard one. Yeah, That's very a, hard it's a very good question. Like, They've all been good. It's not one that I'm disappointed. If with. there's not one that you're disappointed, I mean, which one have you said that you've been disappointed most out of the bunch that are there? One that hasn't hasn't um, got you excited as much as the others. Well, I mean, I think you guys might disagree with me if I say this, but go for it. I'm going to say Stokes. Okay. I feel oh, I like that. Salford. I, I, I'll take that. Mm, he, I'll take that. The last two games he's played, you know, against Exeter and Salford. I thought he's been exposed at left back. Mm-hmm. I've said this time and time again. I think he's he's more better as a centre back, and yeah. in that left back role, I just think you know he's a bit, he's not quick enough. He's just you know he's up against all these pacey wingers, and like, I just feel he gets exposed too much on that left hand side. And, yeah. You know, maybe if he drops into the centre back role, you know that may, may, might might. Make me change my mind a little Might bit. Might do a bit better. Um, um, I know it's only been two games, but I just yeah. feel that he could do a bit better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd say Stokes. Stokes, no, really good answer. Uh, next up is Joe. Uh, Joe's got a question now. Just, just, sorry, just to clarify, that doesn't mean we think anyone's played badly. It's just yeah. out. I say out of the few that we've seen play, it, who's not lived up to what necessarily. Because is. I think all of them actually plays quite well, well, so it's difficult well. to choose. Yeah. Uh, Joe, next question is <laughs> this is a funny one. It's from Pat. Uh, now, Pat has asked, <laughs> Hello, Pat. Pat has asked, when will we get our first point or three? I've said, I think we're getting three points this Saturday. Like there it. You and you know the goal scorers because it's at the I'll explain it, giving you the result, Pat. There you go. <laughs> Fish bash boss. Feel free to come find me after 90 minutes on Saturday <laughs> and tell me how wrong I am. No, no, really good answer. Uh, next question I'm going to answer this is Hitchin Calling. Hitchin Calling has asked, why do we always have so many injuries? Now, We've discussed the injury front a lot tonight. It was on our debate earlier. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't really know. I, I don't particularly think that Dino's doing anything bad in training. I mean, obviously, we don't see what goes on in trainings, but I don't think he's running the players ragged. If anything, I think that uh, because we haven't got a very uh, big squad at the minute, a lot of injured, I don't actually think he's running them ragged for that reason because he doesn't want to get them injured. So... Um, yeah, I, I don't particularly know. Obviously, as we alluded to earlier, there were a couple of players that already came to the club injured. You could pick out three players out of that injury list that were already injured. Uh, the other injuries, I just think it's just unlucky. It's unfortunate. If you look at last night's League Cup tie, Cuthbert, Sanupe, Carter and Parrot all get injured. Uh, it's just one of those things. I think we're very unlucky. Um, I do, however, think once we get all these injured players back, that the team will be up the top of the division. Um, but for me to answer, why do I think there are so many injuries? Honestly, I just think it's unlucky. Um, so that's my answer. Um, we'll come back to Harley. Another question. Uh, Lock13 has asked, we don't play Scumthorpe till November. Does the panel think we'll win a game before then? Yeah, I've, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think if we do, we're going down, are we? By November. I'm going to say, what, we, point do, what point is it official? If, if we're not winning a game. If you, if, see, on the service, if you've not won a game by November, or not even got a, say not, not even got a point, 
then something might be Dino, going wrong. Dino will be gone, would Dino, Dino, Dino won't be here if we've lost. How many games have we got to the 1st of November? God, I think we've got about, what, about 18? In, 18 in, games? Enough for the Dino out brigade to get fully justified, I think. Oh, Dino we'll will. see Teddy Sheringham back by, by, yeah, by uh, December, yeah. won't we? We want Darren's Oh, no, please don't. <laughs> yeah, but to be fair to Sarley, he's had a Gustavo, Yeovil. Yeah, he did yeah, just sign Charlie Lee as well. Did, yeah, he did. Yeah. He also had a fight in the tunnel. That was actually Oh, you seen the video? Oh, yeah. But what I'm annoyed about is didn't he let Charlie Lee go? He did, yeah. And, and then, then he said, and then he said to think he's a he's a great lad who I know personally. <laughs> but you've let him go <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, but oh, I think one. I think the thing is maybe <coughs> maybe it might have been best for Charlie Lee to leave because I think yeah. I think national leagues is level now. Yeah. Because obviously you got to remember he's not not the youngest anymore. He's. Uh, I just want to throw something in there. I'm sorry to bite in. Yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I know what you're going to say. If Borough stay in League Two and Yeovil go up next season, can you imagine Dino versus Darren Soul on oh, the touchline at the Lamex? That's not. Oh that, that, my! That's not. The that's that's going to be more like the boxing match. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> that's, that's the main event, isn't it? Main event of the evening is Dino versus. Oh, Soul however, however, I do. Th- I really hope that Soul got a good reaction from the Borough fans if he oh, did. Yeah. If he did come back, I don't I, think he will. Unfortunately, I don't. I think, think he would. would. Do you think? From some. From some, he get booed. But the thing is, you got Wilkinson, uh, Charlie Lee. You've got a lot of ex Borough players. Yeah. Imagine if Kennedy comes on because I know that Kennedy and Darren Sow had like a really big connection. Can you imagine that? What a oh, what a game! Imagine, going down, imagine da- going down a Huish Park for that absolute the, the, cracker. The, the, the trouble with Darren, <laughs> the trouble with the season we had with Darren Sow was we played really good football, yeah. but always lost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That, that was just unfortunate. Just never got the results. Always, never got the result. um, yeah, we played really good football. We kept it on the ground. We were able to yeah, play the ball. Completely agree. Right, guys, we've got to fly through these because nearly been going an hour and 20. This is unbelievable. Uh, Danny, next question. We'll come to you. Fly through this one. Aiden Habibi has asked, what's plan B? What's plan B? Short, <laughs> short, <laughs> short, short, simple. What's plan A? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we have one at the minute, do we? No, we don't. Exactly. With all these injuries, there is no plan B. Stick with the plan we've got. Love your answer. Really <laughs> yeah. good. Short swimming. That's swimble. the answer, Aiden. Uh, short uh, um, Joe, next question for you. Billy Bolton has asked, we've had a bad start to the season. Do you think we'll struggle this season? No, Billy. Once we get a few players back from injury, once coaches start to find form, Taylor starts to get a more comfortable, players gel, yep. get a good win, and we'll have a great season, I think. Maybe not the season that some were hoping for. Yep. You know, some had us in top three, top four, but... I think we'll absolutely have a very good season. I, I completely agree. I think, um, yeah. do you know what, as well, again, a lot of people calling for Dino out and stuff. I think people forget that when Plymouth got promoted, they lost their first four games yeah. in a row. Yeah. And just then went and just just smashed really, the league. A lot of people aren't calling for Dino out. The people mm. who are calling for Dino out are very loud. And no, good point. Loads, which is, I, I'm not, you're, not, you're not wrong, yeah. but it's very easy to notice the, the Dino out, the angry bandwagon that we feel yeah, outraged yeah. by when actually... It's, just don't look on Borough Chat. Uh, yeah, all I think when you see it on social media, you just automatically think, oh, what everyone's saying. Yeah. But no, Borough Chat is a, and I will say this, a very um, interesting forum. There are a lot of nice guys on there. There are a lot of very opinionated guys on there. Everyone's um, nice on there. They've just got very, very, very harsh opinions. Yeah, I remember I had a debate with someone. I think it's called, I can't even say, Agent Eves or something. Like that. <laughs> oh, that was just ridiculous. I, have, a, I haven't been on Borough Chat since they, uh, since I, uh, we lost 3 0 to Notts County last year, and I said, um, I said, how bad was it? And I won't say what some of the replies <laughs> oh, were. Oh, just. We're before the water I, shed, I, I, I feel like a lot of trolls do go on there. Again, I like the debate. I just think it's a bit silly when people go off debate and start nitpicking. I think that's all ridiculous. It's but that's for another podcast. Um, right, last couple of questions will fly through these nearly an hour and 20 minutes wow um, my question uh, Nick Kay has said with a lack of options on our left side due to injury should Dino have kept Johnny Hunt um, to be honest with you I, 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 I don't necessarily agree with that because he did signed we, did Denton we, didn't we try to keep, keep Hunt though yeah and I think he, he went to is it Hamilton Hamilton, yeah, Hamilton. Yeah. To, to be honest with you it's all good saying should we have kept Hunt but he signed Stokes and he signed Denton who would have thought they'd be out yeah. injured yeah. and, and if you want my honest him. opinion if you want my honest opinion again I know Stokes we mentioned earlier hasn't been the player that we thought been, but I would take Stokes and Denton over Hunt I don't I don't want to say an ask to Hunt but uh, I, I, no I think that he signed Denton he signed Stokes he signed people on the left We've but got they just Fernandez. got injured yeah Fernandez uh, yeah, yeah Fernandez filled in as well it's TVC. one of those things. TVC? Yeah, that's great. I think um, the trouble, sorry, uh, the trouble with Hunt was, I think he wanted to move back up north as well, didn't he? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's obviously going to play a big part in whether or not you're able to keep him. 
Yeah. Uh, Harley, last question because yeah. we've nearly been going for so long, we'll cut it off in a bit. Uh, Mike Harneman with the last question, and I've been waiting for this question the whole evening. Uh, Luis Fernandez was in the starting team yesterday with all these injuries at the moment. Could he get a starting place in the team from now on? I think he could. Very good. I think he Mike. really could. Yeah. You know, I'm, I, I don't know him very well, but I went to school with Louis. He was a couple of years below me. Oh, wow. He actually um, follows the podcast. Oh, wicked. Yeah, so yeah, wicked. and Louis, I Louis. do believe that he listens. So, oh, wicked. Um, if you're listening, mate, great Matthew, performance. Great performance. Like, unreal. And it's, it's nice to see that we do trust... I know, obviously, we didn't have a lot of options, but it's nice to see that we do still trust the youth. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you look at what we've got. We've had a fantastic history. We, we've had Kennedy come through our youth system. Yeah. Wilmot come through our youth system. Mm. Ironton. And now we've got Louis. Yeah. I seriously... I, I saw size of a player who just wants to play football mm. he was putting in challenges that I don't see a lot of Borough players, players do anymore it's great that challenge God, the that one that he got caught he crunched him didn't he yeah but I, thought we, I thought we got the pop I really thought yeah, we got the pop yeah I thought he did as well to be honest more and than that please so, yeah, I think it's a league one opposition as well yeah, so very impressive. Yeah, yeah exactly. Out, 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 you know, how, how many centre mids at first I think the, I think the, only, yeah, back, I think the only thing that's going to let him down playing left back is his left foot yeah he put, he's put a couple I know what you're going to say because I saw one this it was right across yeah. his you mean yeah he, yeah. Put, he put the cross yeah. in I, yeah. I know he's obviously still young he's going he's gonna, to he's going to adapt um, but I I was really impressed and I really could see him getting a starting position yeah. Yeah. And do you know what as well it's great that our football club really does bring through these yeah. youngsters you know one thing that Dina did say in that post-match interview last night was a young team and actually when you look at Arthur TVC yeah. Luther Fernandes there were a lot of really under 23. young players. There was a lot of under-23 players. And, and the way I look at it is, one day those players are going to move on up the leagues and that gets our football club money. So Absolutely. I think it's great. That's um, a big part of the business model. Big part of the business, yeah. Um, really well answered there, Harley. Um, now we've come to the end, lads. We've been going about an hour and 20 <laughs> yeah. minutes. So the listeners are going to have great fun with this. because uh, if you're still here. <laughs> yeah, if you're still <laughs> listening to this, fair play. If you come back later and listen to it, fair play either. Um, it's been a fantastic... I actually am going to go out on a leg and say I think this one's been the best podcast we've done. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, the best 100%. podcast I've been on. <laughs> 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 one appearance, it's like one appearance, one goal, one man and a match for Joe, isn't it? Um, but no, thank you to all the listeners if you, if you have listened to this long podcast. Um, now, obviously, lads, next time we come back to doing the podcast, we're going to have played Leighton Orient and Bradford. <laughs> um, now, really quick thoughts. That, uh, Harley, I'll come to you first. Um Leighton Orient and Bradford, how many points do you think we'll get from those two games? Two. Two? Danny? Yeah, two. Two as well? John? Three. Three? Yeah, three. I think we're taking... Beat Orient, we're, we're, we're not taking a two and a one. I think we're getting <laughs> a... Uh, I think we're going to get... Uh, I think we'll get a win against Orient. I'm yeah. confident. Yeah. But I think, you know, we Bradford bringing a lot. They are still a big club. Referees potentially, well. re- Potentially even Gibson coming back. Yeah. You know, he's, he, I think he's been playing centre mid for them. Um... I think we could struggle. Or, may, or maybe it'll be the other way around. Yeah. I don't know, but I'll put my neck out three. Three points. I'm going to say four. Nice. I, I, I reckon I we reckon win Saturday. I yeah. think that, OK, we've, we've had a bit of a rocky start. We've got a lot of injuries. But I think that, um, again, hopefully Cuthbert and the big players will fit this Saturday. I think we'll win this Saturday. I think that Leighton and I haven't been great along with ourselves. But I think the team will really perform. We've seen two good patches of football the last two matches. It just hasn't worked out for us. I think I think we'll play well Saturday. I think we'll win, and I think Bradford. I think we'll nick a point there. They're drawing a bit at the minute, and I think we'll we'll nick a point. A good point about the big following that will be trouble. You know, with fourteen hundred behind that goal, but um, but no, I'd like to think if if Dino can play the right team and, and the big players are fit, I'd, I'd back us to nick a point there. So uh, I'm going to go four points in the next two. Um, but no, absolutely fantastic podcast. Uh, thanks for coming on, guys. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Delighted. Absolute pleasure. No, Joe, a big round of applause to Joe. We always round of applause for new guests on. Uh, but no, thanks ever so much for coming on. Again, I'll be tweeting out the League 2 predictions competition, everything included. Uh, and next week, we will be covering our match. Hopefully, the win at Leighton Orient. Hopefully, the win against Bradford. Six points. But yeah, six points. But we'll be covering the Leighton Orient and Bradford match. And we'll be doing the build-up to Mansfield. So it should Excellent. be a very good podcast. Uh, uh, thanks to all the listeners. Thanks for getting involved. Thanks for your questions. Thanks for your free word analysis. Uh, we will see you next week. You have been listening to the Stevenage Football Club podcast.